Hey everyone, it's Adrian from Pink Pirates TCG here and we're back with another video. So today we are going to be going over Ivankov Leader and um, just like the deck that you run with it, I hope that everyone's having like a good release date for Paramount War, picking up your boxes, getting those pulls. Uh, I hope you guys grab some really good pulls today. But with that being said, let's get started into the video starting off with the Ivankov Leader skill. So for those of you that don't know, Ivankov's leader skill is just at the end of your turn, if you have zero cards in your hand, you draw two cards. And this is so cool because all of the cards in the deck like have you discard cards for strong effects. So they kind of work like synergistically with each other. This also isn't like an optional draw thing. So then like at the very end of your turn, you have to draw two cards if you have zero in your hand. But it's just really good for cycling cards, like really good for regenerating like your hand. Um, because you have all of these like really cool discard effects and some cards get effects uh, that you're going to see like when you have like a very small hand. So let's get right into some strengths and weaknesses for this. I think the leader skill is like pretty straightforward. So the first great strength of this deck is it has pretty good aggression for like a blue deck, right? It's not going to be on the same level or it can be kind of on the same level as Dofi. It's just like in different ways. Um, you're kind of playing to like around your cycle cards, around your Ivankovs, kind of summoning like two 7Ks in one turn and just going like super aggressive in terms of like whether you want to control the board or whether you just want to like swing into your opponent's face. You also have cards like Double Attack Luffy that are going to really help you just like take your opponent's life very fast. The second shrink that I want to touch on is that this deck just has some amazing card value. You're running cards that like do so much when they're played or like in terms of generating you value like over your turns that we're gonna go over. You have cards like New Land for shaping your hand, Arabesque Fisk for removing like things for um, four or less. And then of course you have like Ivankov which can potentially draw you three cards and then play you like a 7K if you play it correctly. Um, so we're going to be going over like all of these cards later on in the video, but just know like this deck has some amazing on play effects, some amazing effects when you have like no hand. It's just overall like great value in terms of uh, playing your cards. And of course, I touched on this before, but this deck just has great cycle like it has so many cards like Nukama Land that can just like draw you cards. It has Ivankov that could draw you cards. You have Buggy that can like net you some cards. And then of course you have your leader skill that's just gonna like cycle through your deck when you have zero cards in hand. It's gonna draw you two. So it seems like this deck at times, like if you could get it like rolling, it seems like it's just like unstoppable in terms of like how much cycle it has. And you have like almost like infinite resources in terms of like your hand size. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on is that this deck just has amazing board presence. Like, like I said before, you have great cards um, that give you a lot of value when they're played or like generate value like over a set amount of turns. And then you have these bombs like Ivankov and Luffy paired together. You, you're running the Mihawks so that you could just drop it, remove something off the board and have a 9k on board just staying with like two 7ks. It's a pretty insane like ask for your opponent to deal with just like multiple 7k swings or like multiple 9k swings so this deck just has like some amazing board presence in terms of like just stat sticks and we're gonna go over like all of these cards that make all of these strengths possible but before that we're actually gonna go over some weaknesses of the deck so i know this was like a strength in terms of cycle but in terms of actual hand size ivankov is like a little bit weak right because you're not banking on you having like you know, eight to 10 cards in your hand, like when you're playing green, you're banking on like, you're just gonna cycle through all your cards uh, to find what you need. But that could be difficult in tur like in turns where you have like one or two life, or you know, uh, you're in danger of being swung at for life because even if you're cycling really well, if you only have two or three cards in hand, it's actually very easy to calculate lethal on you. So it could be very easy to like, just close out games against Ivankov specifically because you want to be cycling throughout all of your like deck and you want to be, you know, using all your tools, but then like using all your tools means like getting down to like zero cards and cycling through your deck. So it could actually be very dangerous to be at like a low life because of this hand size problem. So another weakness about this deck is that it can just be clunky at times. Like there's times in my testing where, you know, I can't really get into like a flow state with my cycling cards and I end up like losing the game because my hand is just like clogged with stuff that I don't need. 
Um, maybe it, like I don't find the new comma land to like dump my whole hand away and like eventually like I just get beat like through attrition, right? Because I just have a handful of stuff that doesn't have counters or like that has 1k counters or they're just vanillas. So it can be very, very clunky. And I know that is kind of a thing with every deck, but I feel like it's very apparent with this one. Um, and part of that might be my fault. Like this deck is very meticulous in how you have to like stack it in a specific way with your Dofi and Perona. Um, but yeah, like sometimes when the searches aren't going right, when you're just not grabbing the right cards and like you can't empty your hand, it can feel very, very clunky. And then our third weakness is going to be that uh, the board presence is like very, very good in terms of like mid to late game. But the early game is like almost non-existent, to be honest. Like you're running like buggy and then you're running like the four cost uh, blockers that I'm going to show you uh, in just a bit. But those can be very easy to remove, right? There is they can be removed by like bounces. Uh, they could be like dealt with with a Kobe if they like discount it. They can be rested. They, there's just like a ton of different stuff that can happen to these cards. Um, it gets a lot easier like when you're in the later game and you have bigger cards that they can't just like jet pistol and stuff but other than that like most of what's on your board if it's not the high cost cards is just going to be like pretty easy to remove you don't have anything that like replaces itself like um bartholomew kuma or and you don't have the you know can't be ko'd by card of x stuff that black does and then of course the last one is that i touched on it a little bit but this deck is hard to pilot like it's it's difficult to kind of map out your turn sometimes in a way that's most effectively using you know your, all your discard effects and all your like hand refresh effects so we're gonna get into like what those cards are that make that possible to kind of get you familiar with them but like actually piloting the deck again like it can be very very difficult at times to kind of map out what your opponent's doing and what you want to do uh, and respond it's a very hard mindset to get into at times but with that being said like i still think this deck is really great and it's also a ton of fun so let's just get right into the cards that make this whole like deck possible so every deck has its consistency cards and ivankov isn't any different starting off with the one cost buggy he's awesome so on play you're just going to look at the top five cards of your deck and you're going to grab any impel down type card other than Buggy. So he's pretty much going to work exactly the way Nami does, uh, you know, exactly like Hanya Ball and everything else. And he's just great for grabbing like those Crocodiles, those Ivankovs, um, even like Arabesque Fist, um, stuff like Nukamalan. He just grabs pretty much anything. So it's really, really strong card. And then also we have Nukamalan. It's a new stage, a one cost stage that you can rest every turn. And if your leader is Ivankov, you get to draw one card and trash one card. So it's awesome for hand shaping. And it has the added effect that once you do this draw and trash, you could trash up to three cards from your hand. So let's say you have like two just unusable cards and you want to draw like more cards through Ivankov's leader effect, you can dump as many cards up to three cards as you want. And you might be asking yourself like, how do I know like those next two cards are gonna be better than the cards that I had before? And that's where Dofi and Perona come in. These are set one cards that we've seen before, mainly in like Doflamingo. And they're both just going to have the on play effect of look at the top five cards of your deck and just rearrange them in any order and then return them to the top or bottom of your deck. And you can't do them at the same time. Like you can't do like two cards on the top, three on the bottom. You have to return like five either to the top or to the bottom. So um, that's it's still a really, really strong effect because it just lets you make your deck more consistent and it helps you map out your next turns right and it's not just for stuff like new comma land it's also for um seven cost ivankov which we're gonna look at later and dofi even has the added effect of being a blocker so these are cards that are just gonna help with your deck's overall consistency and help you get those wins and the tools that you need in the future so we've been kind of talking about these cards in passing, but let's get right into like a detailed analysis for them. Starting off with Ivankov, this is going to be the main thing you're playing around with your deck. And these cards are going to be like the main combo you're going to be looking for. So it all starts with seven cost Ivankov. His on play effect is you draw until you have three cards in your hand. So like, let's say Ivankov is the only thing you have in your hand. You are drawing three cards, which is 
insane cycle. Like, that is what I mean by this deck just has crazy cycle cards. Like, if he's the only card in your hand, you're drawing three. If you have, like, one more card in hand, you know, you're drawing two. And then if you have three, you're drawing one. But you're still netting a ton of cards, potentially. So, in terms of cycling. Not in terms of hand size, but in terms of cycling. And then also, he has another effect on top of that, where you get to play an Impel Down type character that costs six or less. And this is an absolutely insane effect, right? Because for seven Dawn, you are basically playing a 13 Dawn play, which is outside of like what any deck can ramp into, right? Or like what any deck has in terms of resources. And then once you read what these cards do that you can summon out, like they get even more insane. So the best card that this combo is directly into and the kind of like bread and butter of the deck is going to be the six cost monkey d luffy and his effect um is something you get when you play him so it's an on play and it's also a when attacking effect and it's just that you could trash two cards in order to return uh a four cost or lower character from your opponent's side of the field and then this card gains double attack so not only are you potentially getting not only are you getting like 13 dawn worth of stats you're also getting a crazy on play draw effect you can also be potentially removing something from the board on play with luffy's effect and then what you get is a card that can double attack on the next turn that you play him and he's at 7k so you've paid seven you've paid seven dawn for up to three cards 14k worth of stats and just some insane effects going on right and then of course the kind of more boring play is like if you have five drop croc in hand which is just going to be like a seven cost 14k play croc is just a vanilla but still like these are insane plays and insane cards like this lets you go just like that lets you just be very aggressive and like have a huge board presence or a huge tempo swing on seven so you really want to go odds with this deck to be honest and you know how successful you're gonna be and how like how much value you're gonna get out of it this is where the skill is like you want to get the max value out of your seven costs you want to get the max value out of your monkey d luffy swing so that you get that double attack you could catch up in life after going into board but let's go into like the other impel down cards that you could potentially like summon off of ivankov and they're mainly blockers so these are going to be the cards that you want to summon kind of early-ish to get board presence, but also you could summon them off of Ivankov if you don't have the plays lined up for like a Crocodile or a Luffy play. So first thing we're going to talk about is Mr. Three Galdino, one of the best characters, honestly. Uh, he's a blocker, but at the end of your turn, you could trash one card and set this card as active. So he's essentially like a mini seven cost kid. Um, and you can use this to like kind of take board presence. It's so good into red if they don't have the jet pistol answer because you could just swing into their board and then stand him back up to potentially like block a big swing that your opponent does or block a swing. So he effectively gets like a block and a KO or just to keep him safe, you know, like you could swing into something, restand him to keep him safe and out of harm and then, you know, use him the next turn again. And then also we have Inazuma. Inazuma is such an awesome card. He has this continuous effect where if you have one or less cards in your hand, this character gains plus 2000 power. So you could potentially have like a four drop 7K on the board if you play your cards correctly. Um, you could have multiple of this out where he's just like a 7K blocker and attacker which is super insane like to have in the early game and it's not that hard to get down to like one or less cards right you could use uh new comma land you know galdino is going to be discarding you cards there's a lot of cards that you need to like discard a card first before doing something and inazuma is going to like help you kind of um satiate like not having cards in your hand right because if you have a strong effect like inazuma then he's just gonna like gain you value throughout the turns just by being a 7k and he's so hard to remove for decks in the early game like they need some hard removal to deal with him or else they're just gonna honestly like lose out every single turn on board and these are both things that you could summon off ivankov um character on play effects and then the last thing i want to talk about before we get into that deck profile is going to be the new removal cards uh, we were already went over Monkey D. Luffy, so on play, you know, you're going to discard two cards, bounce back a four or less character, 
and then that he also gets that uh, effect when attacking and we also have access to new cards like arabesque fist where it's just a two cost event activate main return up to one character with a cost of four less to the owner's hand so you're mainly going to be using that to like bounce blockers and things like that it's actually really good against black because borsalinos can't be ko'd by card effects and they're really annoying to swing into because they're at 6k so then what you can do is you could just return it with arabesque fist or um six cost luffy and it also has the trigger of like activate this card's main effect so you could potentially get this effect off of trigger and then less important but the new 2k counter we get access to um the new like impel down 2k counter right is going to be five cost bond clay and he has the effect dawn x1 when attacking you could trash one card from your hand return one character with a cost of two or less to the bottom of the owner's deck so he's gonna basically remove the card out of the game because they're not gonna see that card you know out of the bottom of their deck and then once the battle is done bond clay is going to return um back to the owner's deck so he actually spins himself to the bottom i don't know why they printed it like this i guess they wanted to keep it like super balanced since it's a 2k I personally don't think there's like ever a situation where you would use this as removal just because like you're spending five dawn or like using an Ivankov effect to cheat this thing out, right? But um, I don't know, maybe there's a situation where it comes up like a cheap blocker that you want to get rid of, uh, but it's there. It's a new 2k, so I just wanted to talk about it. So this is a pretty good skeleton, I think, for the deck, honestly. Um, it runs like all the good cards you want out of Impel Down. Uh, but, you know, there's a ton of different cards that come out for this deck. You know, you have like the four cost boa that kind of shapes your hand is like a mini new comma land. There's a lot of other cards that you can play, but it's just all about like running what you like, right? You could run like counter events in this, like Death Wink is a pretty cool card to look at. But I would start off with this deck and then just kind of see what you like, see what you don't like, where you want to make cuts. Um, if you're like, if it's not fitting your play style, maybe like make some changes. Uh, one card that I didn't talk about in the video is that 9 cost Mihawk. Uh, he's just an OP1 card that bottom decks one of your opponent's 7 costs or less. So he's just great for removal. He's great for once you've already taken all the tempo with 7 cost Ivankov. And then you just drop this Mihawk on him and now you have like a monster board, right? And if you want to see like what this deck looks like in action, this is the exact list that I run in my previous... Um, OPTCG sim gameplay that I have. So I'm playing against Zoro, which is one of the best decks in format, if not the best deck. And, you know, I'm kind of keeping pace with him with this deck. And you could kind of like learn a little bit of like the kind of mindset that I'm going through and what you want to look out for. So if you're interested in looking at that, I would definitely check out that video. But otherwise, you know, this is going to be pretty much the end of the video, guys. Thank you all for watching and just good luck in like whatever school, work, you're doing make sure to like comment and subscribe the next deck we're going to be talking about is whitebeard which i'm super excited for it's one of my favorite decks to play and i'll see you guys on the next one see ya